we, we, the government, I think the government will eventually get to them. Remember, this problem didn't start today. So you admit? It, it, I'm coming. It yeah. has taken decades. So the fact that, that out of maybe a thousand, they've gotten only ten, should be appreciated that it relates to the depth of the problem. And that over time, they, they will, uh, the, the system is going to catch up unless something happens and the fire stops. If the fire goes on, it's going to reach virtually or, or, or at least most of the people who have been ruining this country. But there are questions as to the 10 that have been taken and the quality of the investigations that have been done with the 10, even though, you know, some people will also question the fact that isn't that something a bit wrong when people who are observing from the outside say that this fight is selective, yet people on the inside keep saying, no, it isn't, no, it isn't. But that is what I've just tried to explain. Yeah, you said I do not believe. I do not believe mm -hmm. that uh, President Buhari or Shibadu or some people will, will co congregate in a room and say, well, let's take A, B, C, D, F and forget E, F, G, H. No. It has to do with low-hanging fruits that have come to the fore. When this whistleblowing uh, 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 policy uh, started operating, you could see there has been more revelations. If you look at it, how, uh, what is the number of the staff available to ICPC? What is the number of the staff available to EFCC? What is the budget of EFCC or ICPC relative to the pervasiveness of corruption, not just yesterday, but for decades? So you could not undo everybody at the same time. Whoever you take, the accusation will come. It is selective. Also, you have lawyers who actually are beneficiaries of this system of corruption because of the humongous fees they, they pay, minus the fact that some of them are fronts in terms of laundering the money uh, 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 of corrupt people, claiming that uh, they are legal fees. These matters will take time to get into. You, if you, for example, let's assume you have a thousand people to prosecute or to arrest, and you don't have the resources to do so in one day. You start from A, B, or C, mm -hmm. and then it will be claimed that, and I, I just want to, to, to ask you, oh, sorry, you are the one to ask the question. How come some people who are in the previous government, who have served the previous government, had not been arrested? Either because they have not read them or because there are no cases against them. Mm. And, I, even, and I've just given you an example of those who are in this ones, government. Even the ones who are currently in court, people are you know, looking very skeptically at the quality of the prosecution that the, EF, that the EFCC and also the federal government by extension has put up. Most of the cases are falling flat on their faces. I don't think most of the cases. There was one week in which uh, the government lost about uh, uh, four or five cases temporarily, and some of them have been appealed. But this is the fundamental issues that people are not appreciating. I've argued in other fora that one of the misfortune of the hoax of the legal system we inherit is the attribution of arbitrary equality to people who are substantially unequal economically, politically, and socially. In other words, if you stole a goat or you burglarize somebody, it's easier to deal with you. But when it's corruption, particularly because the victimity is diffused, it's not direct against an individual, it's deep, more difficult to deal with. Definitely, uh, there was a case of uh, Justice Ademola who was being uh, uh, prosecuted. I'm aware that the government does not have the experienced lawyers to actually do the prosecution, but they farm out this to certain experienced lawyers. A lot of the experienced lawyers refuse to come to the fore to do the prosecution for government. They are ready behind the scenes to give advice, but they will not. And in fact, when Robert Clark, who you know very well, a respected uh, gentleman who we believe is on our side in this activism, when I saw him being the one defending Justice Ladimola, I was shocked. That shows the relationship between the upper echelons of the legal profession, even of law enforcement, and the people perpetrate uh, 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 corruption. 
So, so you don't th think he's on your side right now because he... No, no, I didn't say. He has given defense I didn't to... say he's not on our side. Mm -hmm. That's to show you that there's a relationship between those who perpetrate corruption and the top echelons of both law enforcement and criminal justice administration. Which kind of relationship does not exist between them and those who commit common crimes? And I will tell you this one. For how long has there been a problem of corruption in Nigeria? For how long have we known that it is killing us economically, politically, and socially? Compared to the thousands of armed robbery, kidnapping, and the like, which is not as dangerous to our polity as corruption. But yet, nobody has ever suggested death penalty for corruption. Mm -hmm. But they are quick to suggest death penalty for armed robbery, for uh, 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 kidnapping. Mm -hmm. That shows you this... Uh, uh, relationship of inequality and therefore the approach to corruption. That is why the funding of ICPC and EFCC and their staffing is not as it should be. Talking about suggestions, just a thing was on Monday uh, that uh, a member of the Senate, um, Senate member, Dino Melaye, uh, launched a book, The Antidote to Corruption. I think you were supposed to deliver the keynote at that particular uh, book launch. Uh, but yes, I could. Is it a book that, the, first of all, the Presidential Advisory Committee would like to read because it's offering an antidote to corruption? Uh, I'm sure if one was provided to the uh, PACAC, of course, PACAC will read it. We, we read everything that we are supposed to read that comes to our attention. Yes, I was supposed to be the keynote speaker, but uh, because of... Uh, uh, commitments I could not, I could, other commitments I could not avoid, I could not be there. But uh, I, I, to me, <laughs> when, from, from the information available to me, uh, the, 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 most of the people who were there, the senators or national assembly members, I would call them a, a times of fighting corruption. I would call them a, a congregation of, a, of deplorables, a times of fighting corruption. Because in the, in the judiciary, you will notice that in the judiciary, about four or five of them are facing charges in court. So you could say the judiciary has come around to cooperate in the fight against corruption. In the executive, you have the SGF suspended. You have the uh, N DGNI suspended. You have some governors in court now, and you have some who have even been convicted or going through the process. Now, in the case of the National Assembly, what have they done? Now, you have the president of the Senate who is, ch who is changing seats between the witness dock in the court and the uh, seat of the presidency. Why can't he, what is good for the goose is good for the guns of, of the gander. Why can he not vacate the seat temporarily, just like the, just like the case uh, of the SDF eventually? You have uh, a lot of other people in that place who are already in court. And the misfortune of this matter, again, is that these are the people supposed to confirm Magu is who is investigating their cases. That is one of the foolishness of democracy. I mean, democracy is very good, but it has some aspects that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, the demands of which are destructive of the, of the polity. Well, Professor, we'll definitely talk about, perhaps extend that discussion to discuss the foolishness of democracy some other day. But well, we have to thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily. Femi Odekonle is a professor of criminology and also a member of the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption. Sunrise Daily continues about now as I hand you over to Chamberlain in Lagos.